Hello and welcome to another episode of Time About the Movies Flashback. We're flashing back to September 2nd, 1988. And I'm going to be honest with you, this is going to be a real quick episode because we have two movies to look at. And sadly, I have never seen any one of these, nor have I had any intentions on really seeing these movies because nobody ever really says anything of noteworthiness about these two films. But um, i got to do an episode here, so we're going to get through this really quickly here. So um, with that said, let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, let's start off with the first movie that I have here, Rocket Gibraltar with Burt Lancaster. So you have a story here where Burt Lancaster is this retired, widowed Hollywood communist screenwriter and patriarch who reunites his entire family in his Long Island estate for his 77th birthday, but personal and social problems are bound. His four children, son Rollo, and daughters Ruby, Rose, and Aggie arrive with all of their spouses and children to help him celebrate his birthday. And during the course of the family reunion, Levi's health begins to fail and he voices a sentimental request that he be given a Viking funeral after his death. When his adult children consumed by their own personal worries, the grandchildren honor Le Levi's last wishes. And as you see in the trailer there, that's Macaul that is Macaulay Culkin in his fil film debut before he eventually became the kid star that he would eventually become in the years after this. But also uh, Patricia Clarkson's also in here. Angela Goethals from Home Alone as well. Uh, Francis Conroy, John Glover, Sarah Rue, uh, Pr Bill Pullman, Kevin Spacey, David Hyde Pierce. Phenomenal cast in here, and this director is Daniel Petrie, who actually did the movie we looked at a couple weeks ago with Cocoon the Return. So this is actually his second film he's done in two months, which um, leads me to believe probably that this was a film that was originally supposed to come out earlier in the year but got pushed back because the studio didn't believe in it. But um, it's not a bad idea. There are some elements in here that I think could probably make this work, but... I've never heard anybody really say anything about this movie to say that you have to see it. And judging by some of the critical reviews that I see for it here, there isn't a whole lot. But it's got like a 58% with people who rated it on, um, just regular people who rated it on Rotten Tomatoes. And even the two reviews that they have here are not really that glowing of a film But the, for this film. But, um, but uh, I don't know. I don't think there's anything here that really makes me want to go check this one out. But... Um, uh, came out this weekend, might as well talk about it, and um, not much more to say about that one. So let's go ahead and move on to the last movie we have here. Pierce Brosnan and Merchant Ivory's The Deceivers. So the film takes place in 1825. India lives under fear. A mysterious religion's followers murders everyone that stands against their plans when William Savage, played by Pierce Brosnan, who was still very much in the Remington Still era of his career, is a tax collector for a British Indian company, discovers the sect, and decides to solve the mystery. Uh, this is directed by Nicholas Meyer. Now, that's a name that you probably don't know by name, but if you've seen... Uh, the Star Trek movies, you definitely know his work. He's done Star Trek II, the, the Undiscovered, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. almost said the wrong name, but he also did Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Probably two of the best Star Trek movies uh, is in the series, but also he also did The Day After. He did Time After Time. He did Volunteers. He's written a ton of movies. He co-wrote The Prince of Egypt. He wrote Star Trek IV. So he is a well-known director. This is one of those films where... You think with the pairing of Merchant Ivory and also Nicholas Meyer and Pierce Brosnan, you would think you would have something here. Uh, but the reviews for this don't seem too promising, and the film itself kind of looks very generic and doesn't look like some of the better works from Merchant Ivory. Uh, but other than that, though, not much more to say about this one except for the fact that 
this is one of those films that Pierce Bosnan was kind of committed to do because of his commitment to Remington Steel. That's why he couldn't do uh, James Bond because he he was still under contract with NBC to do Remington Steel, and so he, he was he eventually was kind of forced into doing this. So I don't know if he really was totally into this or not. But um, again, I don't really know about the movie itself because I haven't seen it. But um, it does not look like it rates any better than some of the is up there with some of the more lesser Merchant Ivory films, the one that most people forget about. So. I doubt that this is probably a good. I doubt this isn't a good. I doubt that. I doubt that there's a possibility that this isn't a good move. Uh, that this is a good move. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. What am I trying to say here? I doubt that this is a good movie. I'll just say that. I'll just say that because, yeah, I haven't heard anything good about it. Despite Pierce Brosnan being in there, he will usually put his all into it. But um, doesn't look like this is a film I'll probably be checking out anytime soon. So yeah, not a very interesting week at all. In fact, I was kind of, I kind of probably should have just waited until next week because I'm going to be doing Steel City Con to do this episode because I looked at, because next time we meet, we have a ton of movies that are going to add up to this list here as we head into the, as we head backwards to August. Seven movies next time, including Deborah Winger and Court Tom Berenger in Betrayed. We have Mark Harmon and Jodie Foster in Stealing Home, Bob Cap Goldthwait and also, um, uh, John Candy in Hot to Trot. Uh, Hero and the Terror with Chuck Norris, Crossing Delancey, The Thin Blue Line, The Year My Voice Broke. So a lot of movies here that I'm going to be looking at next time we meet here on this particular show. And that will be next Friday. So, um, so uh, yeah. With that said, uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Time About the Movies Flashback. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, um, hit the playlist below. Check out the previous episode. And hit the like and subscribe button if you like seeing videos like this and want to see more of them. So, um... With that said, I am off, so I will see you guys next time, and until then, take care.